Now, one of the issues, though, that I said is that random assignment leads to groups that are about the same, right? And if we have, uh, you know, if we have a very large uh, uh, number of people in each group, this difference will be almost negligible. Uh, but if, you know, if we don't have the, the biggest resources for our study and we have, you know, just 10 or 20 or, or 30 people in the group, it's very, there's a very good chance that just picking randomly will get a little bit of a difference between the two groups. So random assignment makes them about the same, but not exactly the same. So this uh, becomes a little bit of an issue that, you know, if we look at the, these results, did we make these people less sick by giving them our medicine? Did we cause them to get better? Or was this difference just because the people in this group happened to have slightly better immune systems or, or happened to be a little bit less sick to begin with? And we don't really know the answer to that um, by just by looking at these results. Now, when we look at this, we say, did, did the experiment work? Did they get better? Um, these are, are it kind of looks here like, well, maybe they didn't. This is a very small difference. If we make the little the difference a little bit bigger, we can we can be a little more confident. Uh, as the as the difference gets bigger and bigger, our confidence grows that this difference was caused by the experimental treatment and not something that we just happened to get at the beginning of the study. So the the principle I'm trying to show here is that the bigger the difference, the more likely it's not simply a result of a random assignment. It's not just due to chance. So there's always a possibility. There's always some uh, a remote possibility that you get any kind of difference that you that you observe is due to uh, randomness. Just just you just happened to have bad luck and pick uh, people who have killer immune systems and put all of them in your experimental group. Now, if you have uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 people, the chances of getting a difference of this size is extremely small. So the bigger the difference, the more likely it's not just a result of that randomness, not just a result of chance. But then the question is, how big a difference is big enough? So if we see a little difference, is that enough? If we see a slightly bigger difference, is that enough? It's not very clear. So we have to do some mathematics, some statistics to actually tell uh, the answer to this. We know that the bigger the difference, the more uh, confident we can be that we had a real effect and it wasn't just due to chance, but we actually would have to do some calculations to see how confident we can be that the, that the difference was actually caused by our experiment. And the term we use here is a statistically significant difference. So we're not actually going to do any of the math, but this is what you would calculate is whether you have a statistically significant difference. And so again, don't be intimidated by the fact that this is a mathematical sounding concept. We're not gonna do any of the math. I just want you to understand conceptually what we're talking about. That a statistically significant difference is a difference that's larger than what you would expect from random chance or error alone. So you know, this could just be random chance or error. This could just be random chance or error, but the more people you have in each group, the less likely that becomes. So you do a calculation that considers how many people are in each group, how big this difference is, and you, you are able to find out how likely it is that a particular size of difference in a particular experiment is from chance. And so what scientists will do is they'll do this calculation and they'll find out something like, well, this difference, there was only a one in a hundred uh, a probability that that would have come about just randomly. If I just randomly assign people to these two groups and I did this experiment a hundred times, only one out of those hundred times would I actually uh, be likely to get, okay, uh, a bunch of people in this group who have a better immune system. So because of that, it's, it's a very unlikely occurrence. So I'm about 99% confident that my results are really due to, uh, to the experimental group uh, being caused to get less sick by the treatment, right? In other words, I can be very confident that I really did have an effect on this group. So uh, basically, a statistically significant difference is just where we say, you know, I'm confident enough that that was a real effect and not just some random chance thing in my experiment. This again is why, you know, with a lot of these results, we don't ever know for absolute certain that, that what we observed uh, was for the reasons we think that it happened. 
this is why uh, one of the reasons why scientists again tend to think in terms of probabilities. They tend to say, say things like, "Well, I'm 95 or 99 or 99.99 percent certain that this treatment causes uh, uh, the the patients to get better." But you know, it's possible this was some random fluke thing where I happen to have people with killer immune systems in this group. So we have to acknowledge that that's the case, but we try to put a number on it so we know how confident we are. And if the number is high enough, if the probability is high enough, then we say it's a statistically significant difference. Now, there's a related term to this called a practically significant difference. Let me back up here for a second. I could find a statistically significant difference and have it not really matter at all. This is a very specific term that we use in science. When we use the term significant in everyday language, we usually mean it's something that's important but this might not be an important difference. It just depends on the context. So I might uh, have a whole lot of uh, participants in each of these groups so that even when I get this tiny little difference, it comes up being a statistically significant difference, meaning uh, I really am confident that I, I gave these guys a pill and they got a little bit less sick, but it's not a big difference. They only got a little bit less sick. So the question is, does this matter? Does it have practical significance? So that's what we mean by a practically significant difference is really does it matter? Sometimes this is called a clinically significant difference because it, it, what we're saying is would a doctor or a therapist actually care about this, actually want to use this to treat their patients? So a practically significant difference is a difference that's large enough to be significant or important in a practical manner rather than simply a statistical one, okay? So let me give you a couple of different examples. We could um, be very confident, again, that this is a statistically significant difference, meaning this difference is not from chance. This difference, uh, even though it's small, we know that it was really caused by our experimental treatment. But suppose, uh, I'll give you one scenario. One scenario is uh, you have to take 200 pills um, every hour, and uh, it, this helps you get over the common cold five minutes sooner than you otherwise would. Well, that might be statistically significant, but nobody's actually going to care about these results in any kind of practical setting. So it's just sort of, okay, this is an academic exercise, and uh, this might tell us something interesting about how the body works, but nobody's actually going to ever use this medicine. So it's no practical or clinical significance, even though it is statistically significant. Now, the other possibility is it's this statistically significant difference, it's small, and you might say, well, if it's that small, it doesn't matter. But what if this is a treatment for uh, HIV, for example, or AIDS, and this completely cures someone, completely eradicates the HIV virus in one out of a thousand people. If you have HIV, uh, oh, and it's also very uh, inexpensive, it costs five bucks for the pill, um, and you only have to take it once. Well, it seems like it's worth spending five bucks to take a pill that gives you a one out of a thousand chance of completely curing a very serious illness. So in that case, even though the difference is small, it's not only statistically significant, significant, it's also practically significant. So these are just the kinds of issues that you have to think about when you look at these results. And one of the reasons why I bring this up is because when you look at popular news articles, they don't usually talk about either of these things. They just say scientists found that this pill makes people less sick. Well, presumably it's at least a statistically significant difference, but is it a difference that's large enough to matter? and they don't really usually talk about that. So sometimes we get this dietary advice or advice about what vitamins we should take, but they haven't actually said whether it's a big enough difference to be worth your money, basically. So that's something to keep in mind. And it's the kind of thing that you can tell if you actually look at the original scientific journal articles.